time. All the time. We're going to ask Sister Barbara if she can come. She is our prayer leader. Just thank the Lord for her.
Bishop, my brother Bob, my bless you. God bless you. Well, I'm glad, glad to be here tonight. Amen. Amen. It's been many months since I've been here. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And I want to thank each and every member of this congregation for their prayers. Amen. Well, I wish you for me. Amen. And I want to thank each and every one of you all for listening to me.
but my song was this was Say the name of Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. Say the name so precious there is no other name I know.
is in the mission.
got the second round, and he made it again. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. Those of you who are here for the first time, we want to welcome you. And we uh, thank the Lord for you coming and being with us. And we hope that you have enjoyed the service so far. Um, hope to get to know you. And uh, we are uh, just glad that you saw fit to grace us with your presence and to come out this morning. And we want you to feel welcome. And uh, we thank the Lord. All right. Isaiah chapter 43. And uh, we, are, we are in the process of remodeling. Brother Jim, he called me this morning. He said, have you been in the new first lady to enter the church? And I said, uh, yes, sir. And he said, oh, I come in. And he said, stuff was real range. He said, I thought somebody had come in. And that's, I said, no, we, we, uh, we were there. And, and uh, I want to pray for Sister uh, Pauline.
For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Uh -huh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I would like to speak to you on just one word. And it's, I have to pronounce it like I'm going to use it. So, everybody say that. So, all right, say it one more time. So, all right. Father in heaven, we thank you for your wonderful word. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for these precious hearts that have come here today. Amen. Lord, we don't stand in judgment of anyone. Lord, or in any situation, because you are the great God. Yes, he is. Lord, we are here today because, Father, we're wanting to move forward. And we want to be, be what you want us to be. Thank you, Lord, for just everything. Now, Holy Spirit, hide me and speak what you would have to be spoken to these hearts today. May we be encouraged. Lord, and lift it up, oh Father, so that we can fulfill your great commission and so that we will be ready when you come back to be with us. Heal every broken situation this morning through this word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mr. Webster calls the past um, that it is a time that has gone by. Uh, the past is the place of all events that occurred before a given point in time. Let me say that again. The past is the place of all events that occurred before a given point in time. Right. I'll say that one more time. The past is the place of all events that occurred before a given point in time. Okay. It is contrasted with and defined by the present and the future. Past is contrasted by the present and the future. The past does not have the ability to hinder or cancel the present. Neither does it have the ability to prevent or cancel your future. When we are looking at the past, we are ex actually experiencing time. The ability to experience time is when we are able to reach into our memory and recollection lection of things that happened or has happened before the present. Let me say that in another way. When we are looking back in time, we are looking back into the past. And we are reaching into our memory, uh, our ability to recall or our recollection of things that has happened before our now. Amen. Yes, sir. This is what is what is referred to as recall. And recall is a type of information that is retrieved from our memory, whether they be good or whether they be bad. It's the past. Recall is one of the biggest enemies of a change or an attempted 
an attempt to change a life. Recall of the past can delay you. Recall can put you in a place to where you are literally spinning your wheels with great energy but not getting anywhere. That's where our mind gets when we begin to think about the past. The past is simply an explanation of how I got here. Of how I got to where I am. But the past is not a statement of where I'm going. Y'all quiet on me this morning. I said the past is not a statement of where I am going. It is a statement of where I have been. But it is not a statement of where I'm going. And I'm going to let you know, for many people, it is not even a statement of their now. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Are y'all going to pray with me this morning? Because where I'm going is active, or I mean it is alive. Where I have been is inactive, or it is dead. Your past cannot do anything to you. Let me say that again. Your past cannot do anything against you. Your past does not have the ability to do anything because your past is dead. Are you with me? And because it is dead, it, 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 it does not have the energy or the power to come into your now. Or in your future to interrupt what God is wanting to do for you today. Amen. If your past is, is affecting you, it is because you are allowing past memories. I wish y'all say amen. Because I'm preaching this thing. Everybody in the house shout amen. amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's because your memory are trying to activate something that has already died a long time ago. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say it, Pastor. It is simply a statement about how I got here. Yes, sir. Your the scars, the emotional scars that you are, that you have today, are simply a testimony of where you have been. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what you have been through. We've got to quit picking at old scars trying to open up old stuff. Yes, when God has covered it over. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm going to yes, sir. When God has covered it over and, and means for you and I to move on. Yes, sir. Lord God, if you look at your body, there, there are probably no doubt places on your arms and your legs or whatever, maybe somewhere where there was once an injury, yeah. but time healed it. Yeah. And you wash it and you bathe it and you get up and go through your day and you go, you don't worry about it and go back and say, well, I this car that I had 15 or 20 years ago is still there. You don't worry about anything like that. Because it does not have the ability to affect you. All right. Go ahead and preach, Pastor. There are people who have hurt you yes, sir. and defeated you. Yes. Glory to God. But that was in the past. Amen. And your now is your now. Yes. Look at somebody and tell them your now is your now. active and alive. Amen. And I would like to tell you that your past cannot go with that. Go there with you. Amen. 
glory to God, unless you try to bring it forward in your mind. And if you try to bring it forward in your mind, you're now will step aside and say, I can't deal with you yet because you're not ready to deal with me. Amen. Because you still have a relationship with your past. Amen. The devil uses your past. So listen to this. The prison is something else entirely. Simply because the present expresses actions or states that occurred at the time that we are speaking of them. That is to say, at this moment. Once the action has happened, once the action has occurred and that action is done, then the action becomes the past. Amen. Yes, sir. That was an action. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But it happened a few seconds ago. Yeah. All right. Come on now. Yeah. What I did is now in the past. Yeah. Right. Now you can talk about it. But it's still in the past. Yes, sir. You, you can say something about he cast or threw a hand, his handkerchief on the floor, but that's a past. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Or what they call a past tense. Amen. Now, that will lay there. All right. All right. Are y'all with me? All right. Unless I go back and pick it up. Amen. Or the devil comes and picks it up and tries to re-represent it to me. Amen. Yes, sir. But it doesn't change what happened. A few minutes ago. Because what I did a few minutes ago cannot affect me now. Because that was a while ago and this is my now. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. So the devil uses moments to tell you that you messed up. And there he is. No hope. All right. Once the action has happened or occurred, it is done. The action does not need a half a day, it does not need a day, and it does not need a night to be the past. Hallelujah. The, the initial action becomes the past once it is done. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, help me, God. Whether the action is positive or whether it is negative, whether it is good or whether it is evil, whether it is purposeful or unintentional, once it is done, it becomes referred to as something that happened. All right. And is referred to in the context of time as the past. Huh? Oh. The devil uses your past as a means of accusation. I'm going to preach in a minute. Wait on me. Yes, it does. Accusation is meant to keep you in your yesterday. As a matter of fact, I'm already preaching. How do you move from yesterday to today? How do you, do you move from a while ago to your now? There will be times in your life when you will experience the pain of poor choices. Making bad judgments. Yeah. And the devil uses these moments to tell you that you messed up. Right. As though you didn't know that you messed up. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that there is no hope for your restoration. That's where he wants you to stay. He wants you to know that you messed up. And that there is no hope for your restoration. Amen. Everyone in here and listening to my voice has had some time or another make choices and bad judgment. Everybody in here has messed up. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. But since Jesus came, since Jesus has come, I can say that to you, but if you have accepted Jesus in your life, you ought to be able to look at me and say, so? So? so. 
give him an argument. You know how kids can argue and they say a little thing. And somebody, another child says to you and you go, so? Huh? Glory to God. Even if it's the truth, you go, so? And then we had another one we would say, I know I am, but what does that make you? Huh? Well, I know you did, but what does that make me? And if you sit there long enough to the other person who was trying to buffet you, after a while they leave you alone because they think you're crazy. Come on, everybody. And so that's the way that the devil does. He talks to us all the time about what we did and where we were in our life in the past. And it may be true, but if God is coming to your life, you ought to be able to say so. Lord, if God, do you hear what I'm saying? You ought to be able to say so. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Mm. That is the nature of being in the flesh. And the nature of the flesh and the life of the flesh is that you cannot be redeemed. That is a lie of the flesh. But it is not God's nature and it is not God's truth. God is a redeeming God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. And there are things that God will allow you to go through that he is using for your good because there is purpose in your life. Amen. If God didn't kill you, hallelujah, that means there is still purpose in your life. Amen. Glory to God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. There is still purpose in your life. Look at somebody and tell them, say, there's something I still got to do. God allowed you to come through it. Yeah. He's still using you. Yeah. If God allowed you to come through it, He's still wanting to bless you. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I'd talk to you. Yeah. If, God is, if God allowed you, the thing that was meant to kill you didn't kill you. Yeah. Have you noticed you're still alive? Yeah. Have you noticed you're still here? Yeah. Look at somebody and tell them I'm still here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I feel the preacher come. It is not God. God is a redeeming God. And, 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 and I want to let you know something else. There, there are things that God will allow you, as I said, to go through. Because he is using, that he is using for your good because there is purpose in your life. But no matter what you've done, your life is not over. Amen. No matter what you have lost, God is in the business of restoration to give back to you. And I'm going to tell you something. God is about to make the enemy give back to you what he stole from you.
pouring stuff down in my spirit. And I got up and grabbed my iPad and I'm sitting there, hallelujah, on the futon. I'm sitting there and I'm putting stuff down. And my wife's coming in going, honey, she said, you got to get ready for church. I said, I know. But there was more stuff coming. And I and, and then she'd say, honey, you need to get ready. But the Holy Spirit was speaking. She said, not yet. I got some more stuff to give you, to tell them. And I kept doing it. And I kept doing it. And she come back in and said, baby, we don't have to hurry up and get ready to go. And I said, I know, I know. And I'm sitting there and I'm putting stuff down. And the Holy Spirit was saying, tell them. Hallelujah. That it doesn't matter. Hallelujah. What the past is. Tell them. Hallelujah. That it's all right. That Jesus has came. Yeah. Oh my God. And Jesus, hallelujah, has made a way for them. And the stuff of old doesn't matter anymore. Glory to God.
to your new life, to your well-being. God is the God of life. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Not death. Yes, he is. I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgressions for my own sake. And will remember thy sins no more. If your past was worth remembering, and it was going to benefit God or you, God would remember it. Yes, Lord. He would not forget it because it would be vital to you today. But God doesn't remember it. So why are you remembering it? That is the devil yes, is. that is talking to your little head, telling you that yesterday matters and that your now is not important. If you hang around in your past, you can't operate in your now. Amen. Amen. And if you operate in your past, you can't ever move into your future. Amen. Amen. Will you hear me? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yes, he is. In other words, you become something else altogether. When you become a new creature, you can say so. Amen. Yes, when you are a new creature, you can say so. so. Look at this, the former things, your past, yesterday, used to be. That's what the devil says. Hallelujah. Look at the former things in your past. You can say so. Yes, sir. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Remember yesterday, so. Amen. Remember how you used to be, so. so. Amen. Remember how you used to talk, so. Uh -huh. Remember how you used to act, so. You remember the kids used to say a attitude that so. You oh. <laughs> to God. Do you understand what I'm saying? God says it don't matter to me, so why are you working with it? Amen. Amen. God said, I killed it a long time when Jesus climbed upon the cross. Amen. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If it's still in your closet, it's because you haven't released it. Amen. 
know. Hallelujah. When you got power. Yes, yeah. Hallelujah. Because the thing that used to be don't hold you any longer. Yeah.
Because Jesus came. Yes, he did. And got up off the throne. He came and put on mortality. Yes, he did. He came down in flesh and dwelt among us just to die for us. If he did that, what was it that he seen? Y'all don't hear me. Yes, Yeah. 
English. This is your opportunity to give your life to the Lord. Amen. You can make a decision. You can say, you know what, Bishop, I, my past has been something else. I've never been able to move beyond it. Now I understand. All I gotta do is turn around. And if I can start walking towards him, he'll start walking towards me.
sins, I'll give my life to you. And Brother Barney, I didn't go through a long dissertation about the things I would do. I just said, Lord, if you'll just come in. And the sweetest spirit fell over me. And when I got up, nobody had to help me up. I had strength in my legs. And I come straight home from church. And my wife set me on the porch in the swing. I pulled up. I got out with my little crawl and my little pork chop side burns. And I wasn't walking with self-pride in. I was walking with a newfound strength. So much so that she looked at me. She said, in other words, she said, you just gave your life to the Lord, didn't you? She wasn't even saved. I said, yeah, baby, I did. It was such a change that come over me. That revival was starting that night in churches. She said, I want to go to church with you tonight. And I said, okay. She came that night and gave her life to the Lord. Thank you. 